Uh, my name is Cole. I've been living in a van for about five years now. Uh, this is my second van, and I'm going on, I think, maybe even a little more than three years in this van. Uh, I decided to live in a van because I kind of, I hit the end of, of joy in my ordinary life. I was tired of renting apartments and and working my ass off to rent those apartments and doing the same thing over and over again and being miserable in my work and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I just got to the point where I decided I needed a new blueprint for my life. And I had a buddy who was converting an old Dodge camper van with his girlfriend and that looked like a lot of fun. So I ended up talking to him more and more about it getting really interested in the idea. And then I bought my first Chevy back in 2017 um, and uh, been loving it ever since. Well, uh, my first van was a Chevy G20. Um, it was a short box without a high top. So it was smaller um, and it was in 1994 because they made these from 71, which is this year, all the way up to 1996. Um, and I liked that van a lot, but I had always wanted like a 70s muscle car. Uh, when I was in a band, I wanted an old van to use as like a, a tour van, but I never was like, I was like, oh, it's impractical. The gas mileage is going to be bad. And little did I know I'd be living in one <laughs> a few years later. Um, so after that one got totaled, I got T-boned going up the 101. Somebody blew a stop sign and pushed me off the road. And uh, when I finally got the insurance payout from that, um, there was a, a Instagram friend who had this for sale on Craigslist. And he got in touch with me and he said, hey, I'm selling my van. I've been following you for a while. I know you're not just gonna rip the engine out and put it in a Camaro, so I'll give it to you for half of what I'm asking if you want it to live in. And I said, sure. So I went out to Taos and got this and, and I got my, my old dumb, loud thing, muscle car that I always wanted and it's easy to work on and it's fun and I'm, I've got a lot of plans for it that will make it even dumber and louder and taller. I can't wait. <laughs> uh, all right, so this is my van. Uh, it's called the Second Rodeo. It's a uh, 1971 Chevy G20. Um, I bought it from a, a tattoo artist, a piercer, living in a, in a shed in Taos, New Mexico. And I've been living in it for about three years now. Um, I've repainted the outside, I've rebuilt the interior with the exception of a couple of the original cabinets from the 70s because it was already kind of gone through when I got it. So I just gutted it and rebuilt the whole thing out of uh, junk and scrap wood and stuff that I found on Craigslist and that kind of thing. So it's been uh, kind of pieced together over maybe a, the first year and a half that I had it. And now it's more or less in a point of stasis for now. <laughs> so we've got a uh, couple of swivel seats up front. This one I use all the time, uh, especially now that I've got the dog. He loves to sleep there and hang out there. Uh, this is my kitchen. This is one thing I knew I wanted for sure when I first uh, bought this van. I knew I wanted a big kitchen because I love to cook. Um, I've got a couple burners on top and uh, an oven on the bottom. It's just a, found that on Craigslist. Guy had two of them and didn't need the one, so I got it for a good deal. Um, this is my water tank, seven gallons here. This is drinking water. And then I've got another five uh, or another 10 out back, five for showers and um, five for, for cleaning. This is my fridge. I got this on the uh, uh, auto parts website and painted it to look like my old cooler because I used to just use a cooler instead of a fridge. I made that upgrade about a year ago. Um, got dry goods down here, pots and pans and plates and all that good stuff. This is like my hall closet up here. Uh, toiletries, dog food, treats, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, kitchen gear, bathroom stuff, random, you know, everyday use type things up there. Um, this is my uh, closet, more or less. 
Um, it's where I keep all my clothes and um, you know, stuff that I need stored with relatively easy access. Um, the bed I built to the same size as the original, but I uh, raised it up so I could fit a mountain bike underneath of it. Mountain bike's gone now because I needed room for tools, but I can open this up here and I've got access to things like my laundry and stuff like that that I need from the inside. On the other side, um, that's where I access all my tools and, and other stuff like that. This is my work desk. I've got uh, a bunch of music stuff that I set up here, obviously, and if I have any small projects to do or if I'm just hanging out and watching YouTube videos about trucks or whatever, <laughs> I'll sit here, sit here to eat. Um, it's great, I love it. It started out as one level and then I wanted more space to sit stuff. So I ended up building two more levels onto it. Um, and now this is kind of like a junk drawer. I need to clean that out and reorganize it and use it for something more efficient. <laughs> Everything in here I built um, with the exception of the cabinets. The cabinets are original to 1971. The conversion company was Ready Camp. Uh, I think the previous owner put this little railing in everything else I built and customized and um, ended up building that doghouse tray on the uh, the engine cover as well. So a lot of work has gone into it and a lot of fun like projects that were kind of maybe started as experiments and I wanted to see how they'd end up like this planter here that I can't use anymore because it gets so hot next to these tinted windows that the plants always die. So <laughs> I'm gonna rebuild that into something else. I've got 100 watt solar panel on the roof um, and that feeds a 50 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. I've got a 400 watt inverter that I found uh, in a pile of junk that my grandpa was getting away, giving away. Um, and then a little fuse box, bunch of USB ports right here. Um, and it does everything I need to do, charges my gear um runs my fridge and my fan and uh that's pretty much it i've got little i've got it hooked up to little lights um for uh when it's nighttime and i need work light got work desk here and uh this is my uh my nightstand back here it lights up so if i need to find my glasses in the middle of the night i can turn that on um i got an extra five gallons of gas on the back i have used that it's a really good thing to have i love it um and then underneath my bed back here is almost all uh van parts and tools and uh and fluids and paint and uh, all the kind of stuff that i use to make money um and keep the van running so I get a lot more of my own time to myself and to the pursuits that I decide I want to spend that time on. Um, I've been able to get into work that I feel um, not just proud of, but appreciated in. Um, I get to work with people that I really, people, I get to work with people at every job I work now who are people that I would sit down and have supper with be friends with on a regular basis and a lot of them I am. I'm really grateful for that because if I hadn't moved into the van I would never have found these people in these communities that bring me that kind of work. Um, I'm mostly a woodworker, um, do some construction, do some landscaping. Um, I used to build camper vans uh, out of Oakland, California. I worked for a company called Glamper Van. Um, and I worked in their cabinetry department, building uh, building cabinets and furniture for their vans. And so that's the kind of stuff I do in general, contract work. I do a festival build uh, twice a year out in Joshua Tree for the Joshua Tree Music Festival. So a lot of building, 
uh, a lot of uh, digging holes and, and raising posts and building stuff <laughs> and wood, woodworking stuff. The hardest part of living in the van for me is a real good question. <laughs> I think so far it's been um, being close with people who end up leaving, you know, uh, whether it's temporarily or permanently, um, getting really close and personal with somebody and, and having, you know, developing a, a really, you know, loving relationship with people who you might not get to see for years at a time and who might just disappear forever. <laughs> I mean, that's normal life too. That's living in a house too, but I feel like it, it happens a lot more on the road. And that's probably the toughest thing I've had to deal with. Everything else is just bumps and bruises, you know? <laughs> I do like being alone. I like being able to get either into or out of my own head, depending on where I'm at and what I need. Um, it's really nice to be out in the middle of nowhere by yourself sometimes and experience the silence or make a lot of noise or whatever you need to do, you know? Um, and uh, I also spend a lot of time not alone. I spend a lot of time, uh, you know, in a recent relationship. I was in, in a relationship with somebody for almost three years. Um, and, uh, and that recently ended, so the cycles of solitude and stuff come around, but I, I have plenty of friends and I have other people who love me and want to spend time with me. And uh, I've very rarely felt lonely on the road. Um, there are times when I want to be alone, but it's rare for me to feel lonely. There's a poem that I really like. Um, it's originally written in Spanish, I think. I, could, I can't be sure off the top of my head, but um, there's a line in that poem where the writer is addressing a traveler and he says, there is no road, only wakes at sea. And that really feels apt for this type of lifestyle. <laughs> so throw that in there if you want. <laughs> well, I don't have an Instagram account right now, but I'll probably, I'll probably go back to it um, before too long because I got to sell stickers and woodworking stuff. Um, so, uh, I, yeah, I'll probably reactivate it before too long, within the next month or so. Um, it's at Rat Rod Rambler on Instagram, uh, like Rat Dot Rod Dot Rambler. I think I haven't been on there in months, but yeah, <laughs> it's on there, and it'll be more active again before too long. Doot, doot.